So I'm gonna run the uh, alcohol burner today. I just wanna make a cup of coffee quickly, just to enjoy the woods a bit. So obviously I just need stable ground. I don't need to worry about burning anything. It's just the alcohol burner. I do have spare water, but I mean, everything around me is green anyway, so it should be fine. Is bit matches. It's just going to be a quick cup of coffee, not many, maybe like 250 mils, something like that. So whilst that's on the go, I'm going to, well what I'll do is I'll kill the fire just a little bit, um, maybe put that little, uh, the device that comes with it which you can adjust the strength of the fire um, it's just a little bit closer sideways really while that's going I'm gonna have a quick look around I've shoved all my stuff out of view over there behind the brambles because if someone does take the path that I took where the camera is standing right now you'd be able to see stuff so I've taken everything that's kind of reflective and hidden in the bag and all that let's have a quick look around keep an eye out for steam coming out of my pot hopefully find a hammock spot or even a little bit of a bigger spot than this. It's really dense with brambles in here, which just uh, makes it a bit difficult, but at the same time, gives you that sense of uh, security as well. Eh? Once you find your spot, once you get in, pitch up. Someone can't really sneak up on you. At the moment it's a very good time of year to camp because if you do have safety worries listen to the sound I'm making just walking around trying to be quiet There's no way you won't hear someone sneaking up on you unless you've been banging down the stellas or something Well, here's a perfect hammock spot. This is the kind of place where you pitch, knowing that someone would easily be able to see you if they were coming through this area at all. And then just, uh, oh wow, sorry man, I really didn't know, you know. Okay, cool, can you give me a few hours to uh, pack up and go, kind of thing. So you got, these two look to be about five meters apart. If you wanted a tight one, you could do between these two. Those two are about the same distance. It's really cool. Just a lot of brambles underneath, but pretty great. Nice uh, oak cover. Quite a bit of dead branches up there. But nothing that would kill you though. At least not between these two. Bushcraft jam. <coughs> nice, this seems a bit open, 
bit hidden from that area which for me is kind of like a, the main area where people like to walk this is a bit of a back route um, nice big oak here a little bit of open space so I need to check a path down there path down there try and find out what's down this side before I go and uh, decide that this would be a good location it's pretty dense so it looks kind of promising As I walk more and more, I'm just getting more and more confident that I'm going to be able to use this uh, woodland definitely to camp in. It's, uh, I've not been down this section and it's really cool. It's really awesome. Lesson. When you go wandering off, and it's a really dense place like this, be sure to look back so you can get an idea what your camp, the trees and the surroundings of the area look like around your camp. Well, looking at it, um, now from the outside, I'm pretty sure I could camp in here. Lavu. Definitely. If I did a hammock in here, it would be really, really low. Nice. Yeah, I let a lot of that boil out. Mm -hmm. So I was gone long enough for the uh, meth to burn out and also most of the water to kind of disappear. Um, at least half the water's gone now. I'll just top it up. Can't have a small cup of coffee, can we? There we go. Um, never thought of this before. I'm always using um, this dude over here, which I bought for really, really cheap online. It's just a perfect little cross hob thing, which fits perfectly onto that, um, not the stove, but onto the actual alcohol burner. So if you have flat ground, you can put the alcohol burner on the ground directly and put this guy on top so you'll definitely have something which can hold a small pot, um, drinking mugs, things like that. Folds together and there you go. I keep it in the same pouch that I keep the burner in as well so it's pretty cool. Anyway, this is the tray at the bottom of the burner which is usually when you're using wood in that fire. And just like, there you go, solution. Sounds like coffee's ready. Before getting the lid back on, just let it cool down a bit. So there's meth still in there, and so far this cheapo meth burner that I got from China, I guess. Um, you know, if you uh, let it cool down, then you tighten it up. Uh, the rubber ring seals the meths in there and you can just leave it in there for your next camp. It doesn't leak or anything like that. Good stuff. Uh, one thing about this wood with all the brambles in it, um, don't know why, must be the soil conditions or the moisture conditions or Anyway, uh, the other wood, which is probably like 
200, 300 meters away. Um, almost exactly the same as this, except like right now I'm underneath a rowan tree, which is mountain ash. Doesn't seem to have any fruit on it, but um, that woodland doesn't have anything like that in there. I camped in there um, two weekends ago and yeah taking a look around um, brambles are slightly different they have a lot of berries but they're really small and they have a lot of flavor and they're quite tangy which is quite nice um, but then there's a lot of young growth and young foliage growth on the bit on the plants so you can make the uh, bramble tea uh, on these ones but in the other place there wasn't any there was like very very little you'd have to walk around for five minutes just to get one cup of tea's worth whereas here one patch, like this patch over here, will have enough young growth on it. So it'll be interesting to study that and figure out why. Um, there are different species in this wood. There's a lot more elder. Uh, what else have I seen? I mean, it's oak, just like the other one. But there's a lot of different things in here that I'm not seeing in the other woods. There's a bit of ash. Oh, there's, there's another mountain ash over there. Probably can't see it, but the berries are right through that gap over there. So granted the young foliage which is good for tea which is this stuff the stuff which there are spikes on it but they're not they're not solid yet like see that over there that so soft doesn't hurt me um, granted it's quite small but there's a lot more in this wood at the moment compared to the other one and then uh, it's not as much as if you were on the edge of a woodland where there's a lot more sunlight and maybe access to moisture, things like that. So, you know, uh, for you survival nuts out there or preppers and stuff, uh, it doesn't harm learning these things because you'll, it's observation really. I know of one millet's shop, um, sort, you know, they had the sign outside 50% off or whatever it was. I went in there and bought a few things. Uh, this is one of them, it was like four pounds. And um, I know one of the things that people have a big worry about when they want to have that one compass that they buy and it's a professional compass and lasts for many years is if you take it on a plane that, you know, once you've landed and you know, you go out and you find bubbles inside here, like there's a pressure problem. So I've gone on a plane now four times with this. I did a connecting flight overseas recently, so I flew to the capital city and then from the capital city I flew to another city so that made four flights in total and this thing's fine so four pounds pretty decent looking compass um, sure I could probably put it alongside a lot of high quality compasses to first find out whether it really is pointing in the right direction but I think with my limited skills and whatever I think it suffices for now one thing I always forget to do, I always bring um, this compass along. I always forget to check direction when I find a little spot like here, okay, west, north and all that stuff. So now I know um, west is behind me, which is kind of weird. I was thinking west would be where south is pointing now, the white arrow. I would have thought that west was kind of there or maybe you see where it says 50 degrees. So west is pointing towards the, uh, sorry, south is pointing towards the 20. So where I'd say 50 was, that's where I thought uh, west was. Anyway, I think um, I've been thinking about it recently and I'm thinking of doing a uh, map reading and navigation course. Not a heavy, heavy, heavy one, but uh, it would be nice to learn these things. It's this kind of stuff that I enjoy so much about the outdoors, about the wilderness. Is, um, I mean, I know we're not far from the city, right? But this old, ancient, kind of like spiritual stuff going on. Um, it's kind of hard to explain.
bag down. I think I'm gonna leave the tripod here for a bit. Just gonna explore these all these little paths around here just to see if they get close to a uh, civilization at all before I make the decision to possibly camp here at some point. The reason why it's a little bit worrying is because um, the brambles don't reach all the way across so they have been disturbed at least this season. I do have a feeling it's the horses and the last thing you want when you're trying to have a wild camp session is a whole bunch of horses just hanging around your tent just staring at you and stuff. <laughs> I wouldn't mind it if I'd already packed up and then they came along but not while I'm trying to do my thing you know. Oh yeah, so wild camping tip. Obviously, I'm sure you can all figure it out. If you want to go camp somewhere, you found a woodland, you go take a look during the day and all that stuff. Thoroughly take a look at any possible path entering towards the area where you'll be pitching. That way you know what angle, what direction people could come from. So you can kind of keep an eye out, keep an ear out mostly. And you also know what direction you can go off and if you hear people coming and you get a bit scared and you like quickly uh, pack up. I know that sounds a bit lame, like it usually takes me like an hour to pack up. But if you had pitched your tent and not really packed everything out, everything was in your rucks and all you had to do maybe is wrap your tent up and throw it under your, under your arm and get out of there. It's uh, possible, you know. So it's a much bigger wood than I previously had thought it was. And I have reached the boundary of fields that are maintained, kind of like semi-meadow. Uh, semi there's quite a few horses in, there's a lot of that like strip tape stuff, that white stuff that they put around to stop the horses from uh, trying to get through places, you know. Keeping them in particular paddocks, I guess it is. So... That's machinery over there. I don't know if it's farm machinery. It sounds a little bit like a wood chipper, but uh, it's definitely not a wood chipper because I know the sound of those guys. That sounds something similar. So I just want to go a little bit further down here, see what I can find. This particular path here seems like really well used. <laughs> wow, this is quite nice over here. A bit dense with brambles, but pretty nice wow. wow look at that seasoned wood jeez that's huge <laughs> could make use of that at some point at least some of it that was nice and ripe I'm super hungry, haven't had breakfast yet. I've had like coffee when I woke up. A small handful of pistachio nuts. And what else? Um, that was it. And then my coffee you saw me having now. And then it's now 12.01. Starting to beat it. <laughs> Um